Oh my god. Hey guys, what's up? It is Snitchery. How you doing? Today is about to be messy. I've seen a couple popular TikTokers use this method with seemingly a lot of success, at least on camera, so I'm very curious to try it out for myself. And we're going to be pitting that against another trend that I want to try. It's kind of the darling of like beauty experts. You know when you like, you'll look at Vogue and it'll be like beauty experts say that this is the new trend for 2021. Apparently, we are all supposed to be emulating dolphin skin. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored and I, okay, listen. So when I take a sponsorship, I always, of course, try the product before like signing a contract just so I can make sure that it works and that it's something I really like. There are a lot of times where I get things and I don't like them, so I don't show them to you guys. This is perhaps the sponsorship that surprised me the most just because it felt too good to be true. I was literally like, okay, I'll try it, but there's no way this works. It does. It does. Let me show you Kenzie, baby. Is it backwards? No. I am a person, and you might also be a person, who suffers intensely from, like, razor bumps, like shaving bumps. I'm also one of those people who has always been interesting in getting like laser hair removal in the salon or really considered waxing because me and razors just do not agree. I always see these girls with like really smooth like armpits or like bikini lines. I'm like, so this is the Kenzie IPL hair removal handset. Essentially what this is, is like at home hair removal. It only takes a couple of minutes every single week. You can use it on your bikini area. You can use it on your armpits. You can use it on your face. It is shockingly easy to use. I use it in a place that'll keep me from being monetized on YouTube, okay? For someone who also suffers from like razor bumps or just like you thought that like really smooth, perfectly hairless skin was unachievable for you, it's not, this is the secret. It's very safe. There have been a number of worldwide tests talking about how safe IPL hair removal is. I've been using this, like I said, for four weeks now, and I've noticed a ridiculous difference in my hair growth process. Now, it takes 12 weeks for the hair to be removed completely, but like compared to how fast my hair would grow back before and compared to how thick it was and how irritated my skin would be after shaving, it's night and day. Plus, once you get through those full 12 weeks of hair removal, you literally only have to use this thing once a month. It takes less than five minutes for me. Maintained hairless. Just forever. It also comes with this handy little guide to show you everything you need to know. It took me about 10 seconds to learn. It's very easy. It comes with this little cord. Hit this little green button on the back. Here you have different settings for how intense. Put this against your skin and that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys in real time how it works. Plug it in. Press yourself a little green button. You hear that? That's as loud as it gets. So it's really not intense. Then on the back here you have your intensity level. So just keep hitting that green button again and again and again based on your skin tone, your hair color, like your body hair color, and also how intense you want to make it. So I'm going to show you guys on my legs. I'm going to go ahead and set my intensity. Now normally I would go for the most intense because I've been using this device, but because I don't normally use it on my thigh here, I'm actually going to go for one of the lower intensities. And that's it. If you're doing a larger area like your leg here, you can hold the button down and it will continuously make little passes. For me, doing this once a month is so much easier than shaving, than waxing, so that by the end of the 12 weeks, you're happy and hairless. So, normally this bad boy is $229, cheaper than going and getting like waxes or definitely laser hair removal in a salon. But if you use my code SNITCHERY down below, you can get it for $179. You can go to Kenzie.com, that's K E nzzi.com and use my code snitchery for an entire $50 off. Now that we've talked about that kind of skin, let's talk about the skin up here. If you clicked on this video and have no idea what I'm talking about when I refer to this TikTok trend, it was started by a TikToker named Meredith Duxbury. And I'll be honest, okay, when she does it, by the end, her face looks flawless, but it is a utterly ridiculous <laughs> amount of foundation. Like I said, it looks really good when she does it. I think makeup is very much like what works for you doesn't necessarily have to work for everyone, but I am a little curious. Now I think there is a decent chance that weirdly the really foundation side is going to look better on camera and that you guys might actually prefer the way that one looks. Hers looks so good on TikTok. When you have a really full coverage foundation on camera, you're not really able to see the skin texture that you're able to see in real life. Like something about the way lenses work, I don't know, I went to film school for freaking two years. <laughs> 
dump foundation on your face and then you rub it in with your fingers. So maybe something about your fingers heating up the product changes the results. I don't know, we'll have to see. I'm gonna use the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. I haven't actually used much of this, so I'm not sure how good of a color match it is, but I'm wanting to try it because I know this is like a staple for a lot of people. So what Meredith does is just put a bunch of it on her hands, I guess to like show it off. And then she takes a little stick applicator and puts it all over her face. I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze it. And when I say, no, guys, no, right on the sweatpants, no. Oh, that's so annoying. Anyway, if you're a long time watcher of this channel, you'll know that I stopped wearing liquid foundation altogether. Oh my God, because I, hate the feeling. This is not really my shade either. I hate the feeling of wetness on my face. Oh. The amount of product I currently have going on, it's giving me very, very peanut butter. Um, guess I'll take it down the neck a little bit just so it's less unpleasant for you guys to look at. Now, even in the TikToks, the makeup always looks... I can't take myself seriously. The makeup always looks pretty scary by this point. What seemingly makes it look good on camera is that they set their entire face with powder. So I'm gonna take the one size translucent powder and just this brush from Bare Minerals is leaving just little brush hairs everywhere. Guys, look at the amount of hairs that have come off this brush. What is going on? Guys, bad news. I just watched the video and realized that I missed a really crucial step. There's an unholy amount of concealer. This is rubbed in with your fingers. I might've fucked this up a little bit because I already powdered my face, but under my eyes still was not set. I will say for using this much product, there's literally no way you could do this, I feel like, without using your fingers. Next is bronzer and contour. I think there's no way right now, and I'm using a powder. I think this is from Il Maquillage. Oh wow, that is a difference in color. I feel like there's no way that this could look natural right now just because I have so much product on my face that of course it's coming across as just one flat color, which is very scary and very uncanny. I feel a little bit like a purge mask. I'm also gonna go ahead and do my brows real quick off camera because that is not assisting the overall look and I'll be back. Okay, I just attempted brows as best I could. To be honest, the worst part about this foundation is that it's weirdly hard to get through it. <laughs> to get to your lips, to get to your brows. I'm gonna go into the House Labs Head Rush Blush and Highlighter Duo, guys. I'm always on the lookout for a true orange, like real orangey terracotta blush. It's not like a coral. Can you guys see that? Do you see this texture as I'm trying to put blush on? Ah. Do I feel unpleasant? Yes. Does it look not great up close? It's not the best. However, when I sit back, with my little ring light. I think this is very much a case of don't knock it until you try it. And also this is for a very specific moment or situation. Like I certainly would not leave the house with this amount of product on my face. I would just like physically feel uncomfortable having this much. I'm very aware that it's on here. I can physically feel the foundation sitting on my face, especially when I like move my mouth or when I talk. But while I'm looking at you guys in the camera, especially in the viewfinder, this is a level of skin perfection that quite literally you could not achieve in real life. And I think there's something to be said for the fact that there are moments when you want to film, when you want to take pictures, when you know you're going to have studio lighting or good lighting where makeup like this is gonna look great. Now I'm gonna turn down my ring light so you guys can see what it looks like when I don't have professional or studio lighting. By professional I mean like a ring light from Amazon. You know what? I'm just sitting in front of my window now. Even now without professional lighting on camera. I'm telling you there's something about camera lenses. My makeup still looks really good. Y'all I'm like it's not something I would do again just because I don't like how it feels but I'm shocked by how good this looks on camera. Am I crazy? Comment down below what you think. Like, you guys saw the disaster that was this minutes ago. This foundation shade is a very different color from my face, but God, look at that. Holy shit. Oh my God, this stuff is thick. <laughs> oh, it's all of my hair and everything. Okay, I thought I could do this on camera, but it looks like this is gonna take a second, so I'll be back. Seeing my natural face next to this freakishly perfect face, there's literally no way to compete with this. And I feel like this side is what we're being shown to be real skin, like a real person skin. But this side, I'm gonna use my Creme Shop Pink Water Cream. Dolphin skin is kind of similar to glass skin, except it seems like you have the ability, oh, I love this stuff, it literally feels like water, to also add on like your blush and a little bit of bronzing. Like you can kind of have a full face, but your skin just looks very dewy. It looks like a porpoise. First, I'm gonna go in with this H2O Skin Tint. This is a tinted face gel from Pixi. And I'm just gonna drop a little bit of that onto my face. And I'm gonna use a wet beauty blender, even this is 
is probably too much, but compared to the other side, <laughs> really been liking this product lately. I feel like it's really light, but does give you like a fair amount of coverage. Also, when I'm doing my foundation, I really don't put much uh, on my forehead or on my chin. Most of my discoloration is around here and around here. So that's where I deposit the vast majority of that product. And you can see already this side compared to this side. You know, I was gonna go back into the NARS, but uh, I think I'm good on that. This is not a review of the NARS foundation because I think I just really have the wrong shade, but because it is so yellow, I don't really wanna, I don't wanna do it again. Now I'm gonna take this matte concealer and just do a little dot here and a little bit here. I talked about this before, but applying just a tiny bit of concealer rather than that giant triangle, you can actually be a lot more precise with it. So see the shape I'm making where I'm really only dipping into the outside and then lifting that color up? I feel like this helps to lift my eye. Just slowly dispersing that product in towards the middle. And then for this side of my face, I do also wanna bronze a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is go into this Morphe 2 foundation. This is the Hint Hint Skin Tint. So it's not even really a foundation. It's also more like a skin tinted moisturizer or something like that. This has been my favorite way of doing bronzer for a long time, just taking a foundation that's a little bit, well, a lot a bit too dark for me. Give you that bronzed effect without adding on more texture, more powder. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take another Pixi product. That is like my favorite product. I found it a long time. This is the On The Glow Blush. It's just a blush stick. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of that here, my beauty blender. I also sometimes like to take a little bit and just pop it underneath my eye here. Next, and this side's gonna take so much less time. This side is not gonna be as full coverage as this side. So I've talked about this before, but there's definitely a way to spot correct with your concealer and also use a less full coverage foundation. If you have acne or dark marks or things you're trying to cover up, I'm always just kind of of the opinion, especially when I have acne or things like that, that it's easier to just cover up the individual spots in a lot of cases than it is to put full coverage foundation everywhere. That said, if you want something really full coverage that is gonna cover up everything, there you go. Like I said, makeup is individual. Some things work better for some people than others, and it's all to personal choice. Now, on to highlighter. I want to bring your attention to three highlighting options. First, we have the Revlon Wonder Woman 84. Really pretty, rose goldy, kind of like a putty. I'll put each of these on my hand. It's literally just the prettiest sheen. We also have the Danessa Myrix or Myrix Beauty Dew Wet. So this is much more of like a, like you can stick your finger in it, but it's almost like a gel right there in the middle. Almost a glossier sheen. There's really no pigment unlike this one. Color Pop in the Clear Face Gloss. You can use this on your eyes or oh anywhere else. And this one's the most like liquidous I would say also the most subtle. For comparison's sake, this is my favorite powder, Bare Minerals. It's one of their highlighters. I've scratched the name off because I use it so much. Put right at the bottom here. Do you see how this adds a little bit of texture in a way that the glosses do not? It's just gonna give you a very different look. What I'm gonna do is go in with my finger and the kind of the most solid of the three and just start patting that really liberally, <laughs> kind of all over my face. Obviously not actually all over. You don't want it underneath here. Anywhere where you would normally put highlighter and I do feel like you can be a little bit more liberal with it than you can with like a stripe a little bit up over my brow. Now I'm gonna go in with a slightly more intense Revlon highlighter and just pop that over the highest points of my cheek. So let's get up real close and personal and we will compare the two. Both sides have a lot of sheen. I packed on the highlighter on both. When I look at the texture of this side and how it sits on my skin, I'm already starting to get a lot of like separation. Just have a lot of texture just sitting in my face. Even my brow, just the pigment looks like it's sitting on top of a lot of product. Not very appealing. Now let's switch to the other side. On this side, you can definitely see more skin imperfections, right? More redness around my nose. Ignore the fact that my foundation got all up in these lashes. If you were looking at me, even with all of the imperfections on this side of my face, most people would find find this side significantly more appealing. I think it looks like I'm just a healthy person. So I think this is a testament to the fact that literally both work for different scenarios. On a regular basis, am I ever gonna go for the left? Probably not, but under a specific circumstance, it would photograph and look in pictures a lot better than this really pretty, I'm a big fan of this side, dewy dolphin skin I've got going on on this side. Let me know in the comments down below what you think what you prefer. Thank you again to Kenzie for sponsoring this video. Remember, if you wanna be like a little hairless, little hairless boo thing, go ahead and check it out. Use my code Snitchery for $50 off right now. If you have nothing to say, drop a banana emoji down in the comments. Thank you guys for being my friend today and always, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.